Photography, continents, and so on, and the, we want the student to recognize features of the pattern. So here are mountains, rivers, and you know map symbols are kind of a good example of that. Um, so they don't just show the continent. We're also going for a little more specificity that that continents will have mountains and they'll have rivers and they'll have north and south and capital cities and so on and so forth. So um, then again, using multiple media and formats actually provides a lot of choice, a lot of repetition without having it seem like repetition and a lot of interest. Students really like using, uh, using different media um, digital media, uh, videos, uh, computers, um, podcasts, all kinds of, there's a lot of possibility for, of uh, ways to engage students uh, and give them the practice they need without necessarily having, to, having them do the same worksheet over and over again. Uh, I also think that Technology used in, in clever ways provides uh, the student an opportunity to have a lot of interaction, too. They're not just sitting there filling out stuff, but, they're, um, <clears throat> but there are some uh, programs and software and various things that really, really require students to engage a lot. And then the other thing is, and this is actually huge, this is one of the biggest difficulties we have with reading comprehension and uh, content uh, understanding and so on, support background knowledge. Anytime you can activate old information, it makes it easier to learn new information. So, um, in fact, I was just reading an, uh, a new article that came out in the Journal of Learning Disabilities today about secondary students and interventions for secondary students. And uh, it, it was, there were a number of interesting things about that, <clears throat> about that article, but one of the things that they really stressed is the one thing that you could do as an intervention for secondary students, meaning students in grade six and up, is really work on back, developing background knowledge and vocabulary. Mm -hmm. That that was one of the key uh, across content areas. Uh, too. So, okay. So, that's multiple means of uh, <clears throat> uh, supporting the strategic networks. Um, how can you multiple means of presentation? Well, we have a variety of things. So we can use text readers, and here is. Um, an example from Kurzweil. This is a uh, this is a passage from a, an American history textbook about the Red Scare in the 1920s. Uh, and <clears throat> are there any of you who uh, have any of you had experience with with Kurzweil at all? Jacob has. That's great. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me show you some of the joys of Kurzweil here. I'm going to just um, bring this down. OK. You notice uh, that I've got text. This is highlighted, and I've got uh, some sticky notes here. This is all possible. First, I'm just going to have it read. Let's make sure it's plenty loud. Okay, and we have Julie. I'm not going to look this up here. Okay. Many Americans have been deeply disturbed by the Bolshevik victory in the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the subsequent spread of communism. German communists were able to hold the city of Berlin for a few days in 1919. For five months, communists ruled Hungary which has regained its independence from Austria following the First World War. Okay. What'd you think of that? Yeah, Kurzweil actually has come a long way 
since I first started using it, and, and that wasn't that long ago, actually. But it has good voices. It has very good voices. It has some intonation. Yes, it's a little bit robotic, but you know, but not not horribly. Uh, for a history textbook, it's fine. So we can the so this, by using uh, having te digital text, the student can first of all read the text. The student can then slow it down or make it faster depending on upon their processing speed. Uh, they can read it multiple times without having to exhaust themselves. They can also highlight, using the study skills toolbar, they can highlight main ideas and supporting detail and vocabulary uh, and things like that. I can even, I can even put in questions that will pop up. <clears throat> Reflection. Why would the collaborator say that the strike by coal miners was ordered by Bolsheviks from Russia? How might that claim change the way people think about the coal <coughs> miners on strike? So, by embedding some questions in the text, I can also, well, I can make them right, but also I can just have this pop up so they think about it, you know, and which is one of the things we can actually build in the kinds of activities that we want students to do as they're engaging in deeper reading um, through, you know, through the technology, <clears throat> which is, which is, which is really um, helpful. And the other thing we can do here is um, we can also extract highlights. So, and so here I get a separate file um, that with all of my highlights, it's a separate document. I can turn it into a study guide. I can turn it into a summary, into a number of things like that. And I'm going to tile it vertically. So I can actually, you know, I can actually have both documents open at once. I can <coughs> drag and drop from one. Come on. <coughs> I can take this and drag it over here you know, without having to rewrite things and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, so it has many, many, many good aspects to it. Uh, and that's one example. Then we can also use graphic organizer software, like Inspiration, which is here. And what you're going to see here is an incredible thing. This actually was a project, a final project for a 200 level course uh, at Landmark and um, in Inspiration. And I will try to collapse it for you. Let me first. This is the extent of it. Yeah, it's really something. And um, it, I will <clears throat> make it a little bit bigger. And I can collapse all these things. And basically, uh, what this is is a, a synthesis of all the theories of ADHD in an inspiration document. So, actually, um, here we can kind of collapse it a little bit. So what the student is doing, you know, here, ADHD, we're looking at the behavioral implications, the developmental implications, cognitive inflammations, comorbidity, and, you know, following this, here it's, uh, here we have Kessler's theory, Biederman and Ferron theory, and so on, and here are behavioral implications. Here we have Barclay's, Russell Barclay's theory, and over here, developmental implications. Uh, again, we've got Barclay, a lot of Barclay. Cognitive implications. And this is Thomas Brown's theory. 
Now, all the way, if you go all the way up here, I think there was something else, but maybe not. Okay, anyway, so you get the idea that um, of this can be an incredibly extensive and useful tool um, that really shows very clear connections in ways that sometimes essays and, and things don't because um, that's which is the